Welcome back. This week we are reviewing C++. Basically, everything that you learn from C will still be there, but we are adding classes and objects. Classes. Classes will help you to encapsulate data and operations, like you did in Java. One big difference between C++ and Java is that in C++ you can have classes, but also you can have methods and variables that are not inside of classes. So your program is a mixture of what you have in Java, everything inside of classes, and what you have in C, everything, methods, and global variables. In this example, you have the class foobar, which have one attribute, int, and one method, Notice that the definition of the class ends with the closing curly bracket and a semicolon like structs in C. And after the class, we have x as a global variable and the method main. In C++, the method main is not inside of any class. You do not put main inside of any of your classes. As you did in Java, the variables and methods that you encapsulate inside of a class can be private, protected, or public. The only difference is that in Java, you specify private, protected, or public for each variable or method. In C++, what you do is to create these paragraphs. So you put the keyword private and then a column, and you can put variables and methods there and all of them are going to be private until you have another statement, protected or public. In the example, char a and int variable are going to be private. Another variable is going to be protected, and the methods, method 1 and method 2, are going to be public. Usually, methods are going to be public. They are called the interface of the class, and variables are going to be private or protected. The idea of having classes is to create hierarchies, and that basically means that you can connect classes by creating objects from a class inside of another class, or you can do inheritance from one class to other. To create an object, you follow the process that you know, the class is the type, and you need a name for the object. So in this example, A is an object from the class foobar inside of the class rectangle and is private. To indicate inheritance, we use the colon. The colon is going to replace the extend keyword that we use in Java. Moreover, in C++, you can have public, private, and protected inheritance. Therefore, you can indicate colon public, colon private, and colon protected. For now, let you use public inheritance. The first one is the class that you are creating, like rectangle, and the second one, shape, is the class from which you are inheriting. In Java, you usually put one class with their methods and variables inside of one file, a .java file. In C++, we have the option to put attributes and method inside of the class in one file. We can put the definition of the methods outside of the class, and we can put in two different files the definition of the class and the definition of the method of the class. I'm going to show you two examples, one with everything in one file inside of the class, and one with a class defined in one file and its methods implemented in another file. In this for example, we have one class and the method main in one file, q.cpp. Programs in C++ are going to have the extension cpp, meaning C++. The first line of the program is the inclusion of a library. In C++, iostream is going to be the replacement for stdio. Usually in C++, you are not going to add the extension .h to the libraries, so it uses the name inside of the Angular brackets. The second line defines that we're going to use the namespace 
std that is going to help us with the standard input and output instructions. Inside of the class queue, we have the three paragraphs, private, protected, and public. We have one variable private, three variables protected, and three methods public. Things that you are familiar with, uh, number one, we have pointers. There is a pointer to integer buffer. As you remember from C, that will be an array. We have constructors as in Java. If you put a method, the same name to the class without a return type, that is called a constructor. So in C++, you will have also constructors. This is the constructor for the class Q. The input and output instruction in C++ are C out and C in. In this example, we're using C out and printing some strings on the screen. You will need to use C out and C in in your homework. So review the structure of these instructions in the book. As you can notice, this looks like a class in Java, but notice that the closing curly bracket that is closing the class have a semicolon also. That is important. Then the main method is outside of the class. Inside of the main method, we are creating one object from the class, q1, and one pointer. We're going to talk more about pointers in another video. Then we can call the method from the class using the name of the object dot the method as usual in Java or using the pointer to the object, the arrow and the name of the method. Let's review a second example. Here we're going to create a class using two files. In the first file, we're going to define the structure of the class. Usually that file is going to have the extension dot h. So, for instance, if we create a class time, we can create that class in a file time.h. That file is going to have the variables of the class, in this case, hour and minute, both private, and we're going to put the methods, but without the body, without the curly bracket and all the instructions that go inside. As notice, in this case, our methods, they are public. We have the constructor and we have three methods. And we need to add a semicolon after the definition of each of the methods. Finally, a second file, time.cpp, contains the definition of the methods. The connection between the .h file and the .cpp file is done using the sharp include instruction. Notice in red that we are doing include time.h and time.h is the file that we create with the definition of the class. Instead of angular bracket, we use quotation marks and that means that that .h file is part of our program not part of the libraries in the language. An important thing to notice, in order to define the method as part of a class, we use before the name of the method, the name of the class, and we connect the name of the class and the name of the method with the scope resolution operator, two columns together. The second part of the same file includes the definition of another method of the class, print standard, you notice the name of the class, the resolution operator, and the name of the method. And finally, the main method. And as you notice, the main method is not part of the class. We are not using the resolution operator with the name of main. Therefore, basically, we have one file, the .h, with the definition of the class, and this file, .cpp, with the bodies of the methods that are part of the class and with main. In this example, the main method is just creating an object for the class, time t, and then calling the methods of that object. It's a very simple example. And that's it. I recommend you to copy these examples and play with them. Moreover, review the set in, set out instructions for input output in C++. 
and the concept of namespaces. See you in the next video.